Hi guys. A while back I did a video that was called Making the Biscuits and Giving Up the Biscuits. I have it in my playlist that talks, it's uh, advice for women. And it's really something that men can even relate to in some situations. Um, but in that I talked about don't allow yourself to be a crash test dummy. And some of you may know what a crash test dummy is, depending on what part of the world you're in. And the crash test dummy is this computer generated replica of the human body that they put in cars and, you know, they'll send these cars or these, they're not actual cars, but however, They'll put them in and they are testing testing how well the, the, they're basically examining and testing the safety of the car. All right. So different from what I understand, different model cars, they'll make like a prototype of that car and they're testing out, testing it for safety, uh, speed, all these things, but the biggest thing is those crash test dummies are placed in the vehicle and they're going to put them through head-on collisions and they'll be they'll get t-boned and all these different things and based on the devices that's placed inside the crash test dummy i believe they have something in the head something around the eye something in the chest something in different parts of it they will send data to those who are testing to see you know, how the body, how the crash test dummy reacted to the impact and what they need to adjust in making this a safer vehicle. And so I was reading some things about the crash test dummy and what it says, crash test dummies simulates human response to impact, accelerations, deflections, forces, and moments of inertia. So that's what a crash test dummy is created to do. It simulates human response to impact, accelerations, deflections, forces, and moments of inertia. And when I looked up impact, impact is just the forceful contact or onset. So it's a forceful contact or onset, okay? Like that, or, you know, just how it, something starts, how it ends, all right? And then the force of impression of one thing on another, okay? So they want to see two things coming together. What is the force of that, okay? And then I looked up another word. I already know these definitions, but acceleration, the act or process of moving fast or something that's happening quickly. And then we have deflection, which is turning aside or off course. And then we have inertia. And to just put the definition in a nutshell is the body's ability, it, inertia is the body's ability to oppose force, okay, that's gonna, that will cause a change in motion. So whether the body is at rest or whether the body is in motion, inertia basically is going to measure the body's ability, is the body's ability to oppose force. That's what a crash test dummy is for. They put them in that vehicle. They're not, there are no considerations for that crash test dummy. We are getting this vehicle, this prototype that we're making that will eventually be modeled into millions of vehicles. We are testing it in its shell state, its prototype shape. We're gonna test it and we're gonna see all that this crash test dummy can take and we're going to learn from how this crash test dummy, whatever information it gives us, so we can make this a better vehicle and a safer vehicle. So now it can be on the showroom floor and be something that, that uh, a vehicle that is dependable, trustworthy, can protect, okay, and... There are no mechanical deficiencies. Now, many people presently or in your past, we've all played that game before. 
You've been the crash test dummy in somebody else's life. Some of you have dated individuals who are not together. They're, 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 they don't have their life together. They don't know what they want or they are just downright dangerous. They are just downright selfish. They don't, they can't see anything. You think that you're going to enter into their lives and you're going to make this change. And so you allow them to do certain things. You allow them to, uh, they're figuring out who they are. And in the meantime, you're the one that's dealing with all the impact and their accelerations, decelerations, their deflections, their forces. And you are also experiencing moments of inertia. You become hardened. You, you're used to their moods and their attitudes and mood swings and insults. And so now you learn how to prepare yourself for those blows. Now you learn how to be able to take the impact of whatever they're bringing to you emotionally, mentally, spiritually, or even physically. And what the data that you're giving back to them is you're right. I'm wrong. You're you're better than I am. I'm willing to take anything. Yes, hit me again. Yes, lie to me again. Yes, I'll be here no matter what you do. You know, there's a lot of people, they'll date certain type of men or women or have people in their lives that will completely abuse them. And the whole time you are thinking in yourself, well, this person has gone through, they had a bad childhood. This person was abused as a child. I grew up with this person and we were abused together. This person is, um, you know, if I love them enough and if I'm dedicated and if I am kind and I'm patient and I stay, then they'll treat me better. But they're not. They will dump on you. That man will, you will put up with all types of things from this man, put up with all types of things from this woman, and they somehow become a better person for somebody else while you're left off to the side looking just like the crash test dummy. And if you've seen a picture, if you don't know, because I know we're in different parts of the world, so I'm not being, um, I'm not being condescending when I say this. I can't assume that everybody who listens to me knows what a crash test dummy is. And maybe it's called something different in your part of the world, depending on where you're listening. But basically, that mannequin, that uh, simulation device that they put in a vehicle and then they test the cars. They're just crashing the wall. And if you guys want to even entertain yourself further, just put in crash test dummy and look at videos. And think of how you have gone through this stuff with people, how you have allowed people to accelerate, how you have allowed people to deflect, how you have allowed people to test the forces and the moments of inertia with you and simulate all types of stuff on you emotionally, physically, verbally, mentally, spiritually, physically in some cases. People do these things because... Well, I'm your mother, I'm your father, and I raised you, and you can put up with this. You put up with things because, well, my boyfriend and, or my husband's been through so much. My girlfriend, my wife has been through so much. My fiance has gone through a lot. They immediately tell you about it. everything that's happened in their lives. And so now they feel justified in their behaviors towards you. Now you're the crash test dummy. You're the crash test dummy at the wedding. Allow yourself to imagine that. Imagine what a crash test dummy looked like with all those little stickers and patches all over its faces, that that empty expressions on its on its face. That's exactly what we could start looking like when we try dealing with people who are liars, try to deal with people who are abusers verbally, try to deal with people who are selfish. They're not selfless, they are selfish. People who are manipulating. There's a lot of crash test dummies sitting in church. The whole congregation has that hollowed out look, looking crazy, singing and dancing on the praise team with all them patches on their faces <laughs> because they have been programmed to believe that you can be abused in the church and the leaders can talk to you however they want to and you need to give up yourself and you need to be able to, to deal with the impact and the acceleration and the deflections and the forces and the inertia because God would want you to do that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Their families are crushed as dummies sitting at the dinner table during the holidays. They know not to flinch, talk too much. They know not to speak bad. They know not to say anything. They must learn how to deflect and just take whatever comes. And everybody's sitting at the table with all them patches on their faces looking like the crushed as dummy. You were invited to his wedding and yet you were the one that was with him through thick and thin. Or you're driving by the wedding looking like a crash that's dummy and then you crash down the road. How do you crash into another relationship? The same place, the same character. Tears running down your face as a crash that's dummy. As you see her moving on with somebody else's, you stood with her, you were with her. You, you thought that by dealing with all the impact and the accelerations and the deflections and the forces and all the stuff she brought to you, she would love you. But truly, no, she would. She has lost all respect for you because in the in the midst of all the foolishness and all the hurt and the pain that people give to you, they know they shouldn't behave like that. You know why? Because if you do it, they are going to get on their soapbox and they're going to know all the rights and the wrongs and principles. They know how to behave. They know all of that when it comes to them. Have you ever noticed sometimes a person is always rude and disrespectful and talking the minute you check them or you say something or you say something rude back to them, they fold, they fold and it is the end of the world. But yet there are the most spicy individuals in the room. They'll say so much, but they can't take it and they can tell you why it was wrong and they can tell you about the principles of the, of the matter and what happened because they know right from wrong. And that is why these individuals pretend and they change up a lot. They're not their ugly selves outside. And normally when they become that way, that's become normally when they show their ugliness in public. That's normally when they are just at this peak of being so toxic that they themselves have lost control. Trust me, they did not want to do that. Some of them. Some become so entitled and so hollowed out and so their heart has waxed cold. They don't care anymore. And then some of them, it entraps even them and they react in a way in public. And that's how you see people, they'll come around later apologizing or giving a story or blaming everybody for why they reacted the way that they did. But you don't want to be anyone's crash test dummy. God did not create you to be anybody's uh, crash test dummy. And the way you're going to understand that, because very often, as I said, as believers, they operate in what? Grace, mercy, love, and forgiveness. They operate in these four uh, attributes and things that are very important as Christians. Grace, mercy, love, forgiveness. But what do I say that they forget to add to that? They leave out God's wisdom, God's knowledge. God's understanding, his discretion and discernment. Because when you have those things tied in with grace, mercy, love, and forgiveness, then you will not keep being a crash test dummy. You realize there are times that you don't need to always be talking back and you don't always need to be saying what you feel and you shouldn't have done that. And then you're going to know there are times that you need to correct the person. You need to speak up. If you read your Bible in order, if you read the New Testament, you'll see how Jesus lived. He was not a docile pushover. And I was really amazed because I had this impression of Jesus. Like, I don't even know if I ever really had an impression. But once I start to get to, to get curious about who the Lord was, I just thought he was gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Look upon a little child. That's it. But when you read the Bible, you're going to see that the Lord was no joke. Okay. He had moments he was silent and he had moments when he spoke up. But even in his silence, it was never a fear. He just was like, I'm not going to answer that question. If you answer my question, I'll answer your question. And if they didn't, they were like, well, I won't answer your question. <laughs> he was very bold, you know. So you have to learn that. Because sometimes, depending on how you were raised and what you believed, and so you may have been raised in a household where you don't have a voice, it, to have one would mean to be disrespectful, and then now everybody's going to a church where this is further, you know, just uh, impressed upon you and driven within you, and then there's a pastor or a leader that's 
just over your family and everybody is tossing out everything in the house because the pastor said this is not good you know just things like that you can find yourself at home at church at your job in your personal relationships and friends that you choose you will continue to to meet these types of people where you are the crash test dummy you are the butt of the jokes. You have that friend that they're a friend maybe behind closed doors, but when you get around other people, they're going to embarrass you. They're going to humiliate you, all of this. But the thing about it is they will do all these things to you, but will not, they will be their best self for other people. So oftentimes what happens if I'm talking about relationships now, that man's going to do all these things to you. This woman will do all these things to you. And then now they become the better, the, their better version of themselves. You helped him get a job. You helped him do this. You got him onto this. You got him onto that. You helped her with this. You helped her with that. And once they reach a place of maturity and they reach a place of flourishing and doing well, they leave you behind. I don't want to crash this dummy on my arm because now they're looking and saying, I've done all this stuff to you. You don't have any respect for yourself. I want somebody that will, will tell me when I'm doing something wrong. I want somebody who is going to stand up to me. I want a person who I can, you know, they can correct me gently and they're not going to just let me have my own way. And other times they'll stay with you but keep treating you like the crash that's dummy at home, but yet they're interested in other people outside the home or outside the relationship. And so, you know, in ministries getting to that, you would have had your been in the presence of the Lord or whatever you desire, God, and God has given to every one of us ability, the ability for dominion and power, not over other people. He wants you to understand who he is. He wants to show you who you are in him. Not that we're prideful, but we can look up. We can stand strong and be sure and understand our purpose. Understand our purpose collectively and individually, what God has for you. And so you will have this idea and you've been in the presence of the Lord, but you get in the church and you find that they're like, uh, take that off, take that off. Leave all the, leave your brain at the door. Leave your will at the door. Crash test dummy ministries. That's what it is. And over time, your, your gifts and your talents, it will be sort of, they will decide when they're going to use you and how they're going to use you and their conditions to that. And you better listen and don't ask questions and don't share too much of your gifts. And before you know it, you become a crash test dummy. Some of you look in the mirror right now and you look different. Your hairline went back and it wasn't because of age. Even though age may be a factor, the stresses of life and who you have around you have accelerated it. Your hairline is, ex is experiencing impact, acceleration, deflection, forces, and moments of inertia. This is not the will of God for your life. If you study the word of God, you're going to see that sometimes the places that people in ministries want to put you, it does not come from God. These individuals want to be able to rule and to have dominion over people and control your purse strings. These individuals sometimes have fell in life. And so they recreate themselves and come to church, but they are still childish on the inside in the leadership position. So when you don't, if they don't agree with you, if you have an opinion, they say, well, give me my ball. It's my ball. It's my stuff. And they get their friends and point and say, don't be their friends. Now, you know, it's going to be done with more finesse and confidence, but they're still, they are still broken on the inside. They are exactly what the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation. You think you have it all. You, the one that were neither hot nor cold, but the Lord says you have no idea that you're miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And so you have the miserable, poor, blind, and naked person spiritually in a leadership position that's demanding everybody drop your crown. Everybody leave your mind at the door. Everybody else drop your vision. It's all about me. 
And so you start walking around like crash test dummy, crash test dummies getting the offering, crash test dummies playing the instruments, crash test dummies giving the announcement. You turn around and look, crash test dummies working the sound, crash test dummy shouting and crying, the tears just leaking out, eyes just dilated, face hollow. <laughs> <laughs> your family become crash test dummies and in your personal life maybe you're living life like a crash test dummy a crash test dummy going to work looking like one coming home being treated like one you have been completely conditioned to believe certain things about yourself, to believe that you are only created to measure impacts and accelerations and deflections and forces and moments of inertia. You have no other purpose other than for me to be the worst person I can be to you. This is not the will of God for your life. It is time to wake up and to get out of that. Allow the Lord to show you the origins of these beliefs because sometimes when you go back, you'll see it came from home. Sometimes in life, it can be something that happened to you when you were a teenager, a young adult, someone that you were with, perhaps someone you were with who was older than you. And so they left an impression. Sometimes, guys, you are still carrying seeds of abuse and rejection from childhood that made you believe you distanced yourself from these individuals but you still carry those seeds in you that sprung up within and you keep drawing the same type of people to you still have the same types of behavior you don't allow God to heal your heart and to show you the truth of who you are so what do you do here's a crash test dummy going on a dating app showing your profile but you show a different one and then once people get to know you you are a crash test dummy trying to get into ministries, trying to minister to people, and you still got all those patches as a crash test dummy. What does that mean? Not that we're so perfect and we're going to be completely whole, but what's necessary to make you safe for souls who are hurting and vulnerable, you don't allow God to do it. So you got crash test dummies packing and leaving, and then they go into another relationship still with all that hurt and that pain. Still carrying those seeds, still impregnated with those seeds from what happened at home, what happened in past relationships. And so you believe these things, it's like vines just springing through the, from the very core of you, through your heart, through your mind, through your eyes. And you just believe that this is who I am. This is what I'm meant to be. And you impose that. So when you meet people who are trying to show you something different, you can't receive it because you used to, you're being, you used to, you know, uh, uh, you're used to opposing forces. You're used to, uh, you're used to, uh, to blows and, and impact and acceleration and deflections and hurt and pain or rejection. So if someone really wants to be your friend, you, you your mind is still clouded with the past. If a man is trying to love you, your, your mind is clouded. And that's why what happens is people who are used to being abused and mistreated, when they have a good man or woman, they become the abusers. abusers. They're irritated by the kindness and the, the consideration of that man or that woman. And the thing about people who leave abusive relationships, they think and they go out and start other ones and they have not been healed. They think that they're a better version. I'm not as bad as the last person. You're, you don't know where I came from. Well, the thing is, you don't know where your people came from. But yet the abuse that they gave to you, the abuse that person instilled or, or, or the, the, the person did towards you, it's horrible. But in their minds, they're thinking, you don't get, you didn't get it as bad as I got it. Parents that abuse their children, beating them with extension cords, punching them in the guts and doing all these things. They will say, oh, you don't know what I went through. Exactly. They don't know what you went through. So you're the worst thing. So when you leave and you're going into other relationships, you become the abuser now. Why? Because you're used to impact, acceleration, deflections, forces, and moments of inertia. So when someone says something to you, you're just bitter, you're rude. You know how to be sarcastic and quippy and cutting and smirk and snicker and snarky and say all these different things because you're still in battle mode. 
So when someone cares about you, you will destroy them. And before you know it, uh-oh, they got that patch on their face. I did a video that talks about the dynamics of hurt and pain. And I did, gave an example of a gift bag. The gift bag is perfect in gold. It's a beautiful bag. You put it in the wrong hand. I crush it. You see the wrinkles. And now the person who crushed it will say, I, I don't want this. This bag is not acceptable. But you crushed it. And you see the bag will look different from the beautiful bag that it was that had a purpose. Now someone just crushed it. Now you see the creases. And sometimes when you are with a person that you see, uh-oh, I'm starting to get the hollowed out eyes. You don't look the same anymore. You, you flinch. You're on edge when this person comes around. This is your sign to bounce. To remove yourself from this situation before they totally they just totally take over everything, your mind. And some of you, you feel like it's too late. It's never too late in Christ. It may require more planning. It may require long-term, short-term moves. But you pray and ask God to help you. Father, show me and heal me. I don't want to go through my life hurting people. I don't want to go through my life being offended and jumping to conclusions because of what I've been used to. I don't want to not walk into the vision and the purpose because I feel like I need to dumb myself down in this ministry. I feel like I don't want to, I can't share the knowledge I have. I can't share my talents. I don't want to sing too good because when they see that you hit those high notes and you can really sing and you need to shut up because that it gave you that look, the side eye. Because Pearlene over here has always been the star of the show. You don't want to share what you know about music and, and all of that because there's jealousy. The minute they know that you know how to read music and you understand how to put things together and sounds, it was okay, but you need to chill a little bit. So now you're diluting yourself because you can't be who you are. You are now being conditioned to being a crash test dummy. God did not create you to be destroyed by other people. He was wounded for our transgression. Our sins were upon him. He already took the stripes. He already took the slaps. For us to be healed, for us to receive beauty for ashes, for us to be given a crown of diadem, for the and given a garment of praise for the garment of heaviness. He promised that he will hold our hands, that he will be with us, and he will never let us go. So don't allow anyone to take you to this place. Don't allow anyone to say this is all you can ever be. And sometimes the person that's abused you and did all these things and mistreated you and you felt you just need to lay down and take it, they leave you and walk away. Why? Because truly they don't want somebody like that. They know that stuff is not right. They know that the way they treated you was not correct. So after it's all said and done, they're on the showroom floor looking good, becoming their best self. They learn how to be more patient after beating your head in. They learn how to be more kind after being disrespectful to you. You allow them to do all these things and now they become a better man or woman, lacking character, of course, for somebody else that wouldn't deal with one of the things that they did to you. Now you know they behave differently. They act differently. Because they're in a different environment. Perhaps maybe down the line they will try stuff. But a lot of times you find they'll go and get with someone who's just as evil, just as selfish as they are. And they mesh together because they're of like spirits. But they know you can't do that to me. I can't do that to her. I can't do that to him. But you allowed them to do that. If you think of the way people treated you at the very beginning of a relationship. And then throughout the relationship, they begin to behave a certain way. And then all of a sudden, they don't know how to do any of the things that they did to court you. Any of the things that they did to get you to the altar. But they continue to do these things outside the home and to other people. A terrible, horrific father or mother at home Everybody wishes that that was my mom, my dad, because they're being a certain way outside the home. 
The abusive husband or wife is wonderful, oh, so great, is horrible at home, but outside, oh, she, he brings us the best thing, they're always so considerate. So they haven't lost, they haven't forgotten how to treat you well. They don't want to treat you well. That parent that does evil, they know what they're doing because they don't do it when people come around. That's why sometimes children who are in homes where there's a lot of abuse, they relish company because they know for that time there'll be peace in the home because the parent knows how to behave. They talk to them differently. <laughs> Get me some water, darling. <laughs> Oh, my sweet darling. <laughs> Eyes just glazed out while they say it, but they know how to play the role. Or they know how to be nice to everybody in the room while still ignoring you. But in a way that's not obvious. They'll act like they didn't hear what you said. They act like they didn't hear you ask a question. They'll look straight ahead. Let, so you could know, even though we're entertaining company, I'm still not talking to you. So they know how to behave, guys. But based on seeds that's been planted in you and beliefs, and some of you refusing to allow God to deal with your heart, you walk around in this bitterness. You continue to be in these relationships where you are the test of force and impact and acceleration and deflection and inertia. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and even physically. This is not the will of God for your life. You're not created to be tested out and tried out by people. Abused simply because, oh, I brought you into this world. Oh, I helped you when you were in high school. Oh, I helped you when you were homeless. Oh, I helped you when you were in a bad space. Oh, the ministry helped you. The ministry helped your family. No. It's time to look up to the author and finisher of our faith. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You'll find that in John 14, no one comes to the father but by me. That's not by a man. It's not by your mama, your daddy, your deacon, your deacon uncle, your, your, your deacon uh, auntie. None of that. It's through him. Let him give you beauty for ashes. Let him heal your pain. Let him restore you. Let him show you your true identity in him. Because where you're at right now, so hungry for crumbs, okay with broken toys, wearing a hard hat and tool belt and steel toe boots just to be in a relationship, messing around with i'm in i'm a work in progress you go on over there and get under construction under construction that's what you need i'm under construction and set over there until you're done until you're finished no one takes out a cake out of the oven when it's not done it's not good it don't taste good if you put some rice on the stove if you eat it before it's done it's not pleasant And so sometimes there are people, perhaps you were meant to be with them, but because you did not allow the Lord to work things through them, you decide to take them anyway. It's like moving into a house that's not complete. You're going to move your precious things in a house that's just a frame. Oh, it has a roof, but the shingles and, and, and all the stuff is still showing and, and the doors are not on yet. Or, well, the door is there, but the knob is not in. You wouldn't move into that because you're not safe. So why are we doing that with other people? Why are we allowing that? Why are we putting precious things into just a frame? Imagine a house. Some of you, you're in relationships. Oh, this person is nice. When it's good, it's good. And when it's bad, it's bad. That is not what is for you, honey. When it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. And even when you have stuff, it's not going to be that it's bad. But this person knows that we're in this together. They'll behave themselves. They're not going to go run into other men and women because they're problems and put it all on you and get quiet on you and play games, whether it's a relationship or friendships or friendships. So many people, because 
<clears throat> you're in a time and a place where people will make you feel as if you're doing something wrong and, and in a time where you need to hurry up and get somebody. So even though you'll see things that's wrong, you're willing to still build with this person. But that is like a person you say I have good times. We have wonderful times. Well, guys, that's like being with a putting a house and the house is still under construction and the doors are not on yet, but they have some of the roof on and not all the windows are in and some of the windows are in, but not all are in but they don't have the locks yet and now you're putting your jewelry and your precious things all up in that house and there's nothing to protect you from the elements anybody can come in anybody can see you anybody can push one of those doors that doesn't have a lot open the windows because there are no locks or just walk right in because there are no doors no windows no locks how safe is that and that's what it is, guys, when you're talking about, oh, well, he has some good ways, she has some good ways, but it's still not a secure relationship. The next time you think that, the next time you want to give your love and invest and do all these things with this person, think of that, that house that I told you about with no roof, no windows, half a roof on, some of the windows in, some of the windows not, doors on, but the doorknob is not in, no locks, no nothing. That's what you're invested in. You got nice things in it. But it's not secure. Anyone can come in and take it. Anyone can come in and share it. Anybody can come and get the same access that you have. And if it rains or snows, your stuff is going to be ruined. It's like a city without walls. That's what an unstable man is. An unstable woman is like a city without walls. They're unstable in all their ways. Amen. Don't be a crash test dummy. When they're doing all this stuff to you, you're going to change. You're going to start to look different. Then they're telling you you're fat. They're telling you how your hair is falling out. Then they're telling you how, oh, how, you're, 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 how you look and your feet little. They don't like how you breathe. They don't know how you eat. Oh, when that man or woman start talking about how you're eating and how you're breathing, they dislike you. Talking about your smell, telling you as a man you're not satisfying them and, and you don't you're not endowed enough. The nastiness and the rudeness that comes in, they begin to break you down. You won't recognize yourself anymore. They'll blame you for how you look, but the longer you're around them, you will deteriorate. Disrespecting you in front of the children. Sitting you down like you're one of the children. You don't have a say. You try to correct your children. She's telling you to be quiet. She's telling you to stay out of it. Or he's telling you to be quiet. Playing you against your daughter. Playing your sons against you. Anything you say, he's going to say the opposite. So you're the inferior one in the home. They'll slowly break you down. I saw something not too long ago, and I'm going to close with this. And it was a lady, she was, she had some sort of a bladder issue. And they told her, like, incontinence, it was coming up, just starting. And she was told that she would have to start wearing, you know, like some adult pampers I guess it's not exactly but you know it's like underwear but it prevents you from in case you have an accident but she decided she's not going to do that so her condition got worse and she just started going on herself and she is like my husband's going to clean me up and my son is going to clean me up both of them have to take turns cleaning her up I think she has some other things going on but She's just, because of what happened to her, even though she can do better, she's like, I'm just not. Y'all going to clean. Y'all going to change my, my pampers. Y'all are going to do this. I'm going to not only have, uh, I'm not only going to do liquids, I'm going to do solid and y'all need to change me. And she was doing that. It got to the point that the husband was no longer able to do the things that he needed because she's just not trying anymore. I can't remember all the details, but she just decided she's not going to do it anymore. She's not going to try. I won't do that. I'm not going to put that on. I'm not going to do this. Y'all going to change me and y'all going to clean me and y'all going to do this. 
and her husband's doing it, just looking old. The son is doing it. He had to quit his job and all of that. And they're just doing all this stuff for her. Now, there might have been cultural differences, but guys, just certain things. I, 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 uh -uh. No. But what is that? Probably her pain, her anger with what she had going on, the changes that was happening with her health-wise. So she is now deflecting. Actually, it's more like displacement, taking out frustration on other people. Let's continue. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put that on. Y'all going to change me. I refuse to do that. I'm going to pee in this bed. I'm going to pee right here and y'all need to clean it up. So what is that? Testing the human response to impact, acceleration, deflection, forces, and moments of inertia. And that's what people do. And what is that? Why do you think they continue to do this? Well, if I don't, it means I don't love my mother. If I don't do this, it means I don't love my wife. But is God going to be deemed an unloving God when he says depart from me to some people? So understand and know what love is. Let God teach you that. Let the Lord show you that you can. Everything that I learned and the Lord began to show to me it was in the word of God and in the presence of God. When I took time and I obeyed the Lord in fasting and praying and seeking him and sitting down before him and really talking to him honestly. As I'm sitting here speaking to you, I spoke to God about the things that were going on within me and my struggles and whatever. And little by little, the Lord began to show me things through speaking in my heart, speaking in my spirit, through the word of God and my prayer. And also he led me to books to read. One of the books he led me to read, I always tell you guys about it, is called Hind's Feet on High Places by Hannah Hernard. I'm not being paid to advertise, guys. It may not be for everybody, but at the place where I was, it was a wonderful book. There were like seven or eight books that I read like in a six-week time period right along with the word of God. No more than the word. I read the word most of the times and the Lord healed me and he showed me and he took me to the past and he took me to the present and he took me to so many things and taught me things. And he can do the same for you. He is real, guys. The Lord is real. He is real. He's real. He's real. I can't, oh, I can't tell you how real he is, guys. That's why no matter what I feel, I don't stop. Because God is real. And I'm not going to miss out seeing him in glory. I don't want to miss out hearing well done. I don't want to miss out on hearing, uh, seeing my crown being given to me. I don't want to miss out on being able to defy gravity. I don't want to be able, I don't want to miss out on seeing the angels of God, seeing the face of God without dying, being able to see all the other saints of old, being able to see Elijah and all these individuals, seeing and understanding fully how things happened, why it happened, why my life the way it was and is and all of this stuff uh, mm -mm, I can't miss that guys so in order for us to walk with God we have to have an understanding he needs to let you understand where you are why you're there where it came from and where he wants to take you all right guys we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God bless you.